This is an introduction to Kukrovsky and a study on poor failure. In this video presentation, we will go over Kukrovsky's life, including his birth and death, his style called poor failure, important things in Kukrovsky's failure, rich failure versus poor failure, and unique characteristics in rehearsals of Kukrovsky's life. He was born on August 11th, 1939 in Poland. In 1960s, he released the book, Towards a Poor Fader. In 1999, he passed away in Italy. This is a timeline of Grigorsky's life, including the 1930s, 1960s, 1970s, and 1990s. His style called Poor Fader. Grigorsky called his Fader style Poor Fader. This is in reference to the fact that he was removing the unnecessary parts like elaborate sets, grand costume, and sound effects via musical instruments or computers, as it would later be. A great example of this would be Blackout uh, for costumes and set, as uh, the characters only wear grey tracksuits, very plain nondescript costume. Uh, but James, the character James wears black jeans with a white top and no shoes with additional costumes also being included, but this is normally just a brace, braces and a bomber jacket. Uh, Grigorsky developed uh, this style as film was a major thing at this time, coloured TV and movies uh, having been released or were coming out or into more public domain. Uh, for example, around Grigorsky's birth, The Wizard of Oz came out, which is one of the earliest examples of coloured movie. And in 1968, when uh, Towards a Poor Fader was released, coloured TV was a thing as that came out earlier in 1965, the mid-60s. Why is it called Poor Fader? First, you need to know that Poor Fader was not going against film. Second, Grigorsky called his, his fader poor because it was not trapped by st the stage and technological resources of rich fader. Third, third, poor fader was cheaper to produce and for audiences, easier and cheaper to go watch. Fourthly, Grigorsky wanted something more, something more and beyond the drama. He worked to develop physical and emotional responses so that impulse and reaction were concurrent. Important things. Poor Fader has many important things, including the actor's voice and movement skills, non-descript costumes, vocal skills replacing musical instruments. The auditorium became an intimate space. Unique rehearsal and performance characteristics. Voice. To Grigorsky, the voice was an instrument. All actors were so vocally strong that they were able to recite atmospheric sounds of, of the world, such as machinery, animals, thunder, and so on. They focused their voice as though it was coming from different parts of their body. They used full registry of their voice from very high to very low. He emphasized clarity and used techniques such as singing, chanting, and reciting poetry. Physical training. Grigorsky believed our bodies expressed everything about us. His actors were extremely physically trained. They developed a technique of movement which allowed them to control every movement they made, even the smallest of details. Everything we think and feel is expressed through our bodies, and everything we experience is felt through, through them as well. He gave actors physical skills for full emphasis of their imagination and personalities.